Hi everyone, welcome back to What's Sewing On. Today's craft video is extra special to me because it is to commemorate my boy, Sir Farrell Sparkly. Tomorrow's actually Farley's third year anniversary slash gotcha day. I actually <coughs> loathe entirely the term gotcha day. Like, I'm sorry, he's not a Pokemon. And if he was, I'd be picking like Dragonite or Farfetch. I wouldn't be taking some common house dog like a old English sheepdog home. No offense. Tomorrow is his third anniversary. He has been here the same amount of time as his previous owners. Actually, technically, he's been here longer because the whole being birth, then being with the siblings and the mom, and then being weaned off of the mom, being kidnapped, and then, you know, going through the whole Stockholm Syndrome. He's technically been here longer. Anyways, Farley comes from a kind of sad background. He was abused when he came to the shelter. He was over 30 pounds underweight. He was completely, you know, full grown hair, completely matted, full of feces, still a happy go lucky dog because that's just his breed. And yeah, it was, it was pretty sad. So he, I feel like the woman must have loved him. It was an older couple that had him and they had to give him up because of his issues and they were a bit older and some other things too. But like when you give up a dog, apparently you have to like give all kinds of information and background on your animal and like why you're giving them up just to give like the new owners a heads up. And so in all of this packaging, like she filled it out good. Like she gave a lot of information, almost like too much information. Like she didn't realize what her and her husband were doing was not abuse. But anyways, this isn't supposed to be a sad or like venting video about the dog that I love so much. He's actually like, he is so great and like, he is goofy, he's clumsy, he's got such a great personality. People always say when they see him, he looks like that Muppet from Fraggle Rock, or he looks like Max from Little Mermaid, or he looks like the Shaggy Dog from Shaggy Dog, I think with Tim Allen, I think he turns into a dog, I don't really know. But I always think about Mr. Muggs, because I grew up with that book, and he just reminds me of Mr. Muggs, because he's so like curious, and he's always off chasing butterflies and whatnot, but... I love him so much, so I thought this would be a fun video to do. So for the craft, I don't know, but I added something recently to my shelves. This silhouette portrait. I found it at a thrift store in a bag with like all different other frames, but I specifically wanted this one because it does have the rounded glass, which I love. And it just looked kind of cool in brassy vintagey. So I was planning on doing a silhouette portrait in this frame. I was also looking for some other frames, some bigger ones, but I couldn't find any that I liked, so I just had this one. So then I came home and I opened it up to take out the frame to see what we're kind of dealing with. When I opened it up, it's like a real painting. It's on paper that is like fading all around the corners. This is actually hand painted. I thought from looking at it that it was just some machine print off that somebody did, you know, whatever. And this could have been mass produced. On the back, it's actually written in pencil, Mrs. Reed. I don't know who Mrs. Reed is, but like, God, she's got style and class and I'm just like, there's not, I can't touch this. I have to keep it. So Mrs. Reed is now going to be living on my shelf for the next foreseeable future. So then I was back at square one and I had to find other frames. I lucked out. It's not exactly what I'm looking for, but it still kind of looks like it. So what I'm picturing in my mind is an oval kind of wooden frame with the rounded glass, just vintage looking. So I found something similar. This was also thrifted. So it actually had the plastic cover. There's two of them. They were separate. They were $2.99 each. And inside of the plastic cover, it had like a little card. I guess it was purchased from a magazine and it was from the seventies, which you can see, this is like complete plastic anyways, but yeah, from the seventies and yeah, they're super cute. I think this is a great size. They'll be fun to hang up, at least until I find ones that I really like, but you never know, maybe I'll just like these so much. So when I was researching this project, I was trying to figure out ways to do the silhouette portrait. I obviously don't have the skills to do a painting, so my other options were to take 
an actual black and white photograph, that's not vintagey enough for me. And another way to do it is actually what they used to do is basically take a screen of the person. So like one person would sit, two people would be sitting, there'd be a screen in, be in between, there'd be a candle say on the other side, or lights, whatever, and the person would kind of like trace out their profile on that, and then you could transfer it to dark paper and then cut it out and frame it. So I thought that would be a cool way. Obviously, I'm not going to, I don't have a screen lying around, so I'm just going to take a photo of myself, cut that out, put it on like black paper or whatever paper you want, and then, you know, there you go. So I was like, that sounds easier. And fun fact, Charles Dana Gibson, who created the Gibson girls like pre 1920s used to actually do portrait silhouettes by cutting them out. He started with pen and ink and then eventually moved into his silhouette phase. And apparently his scissoring skills. Nope. His skills of cutting out paper to make silhouettes were like phenomenal. And he had like people asking him to do them all the time. And he was just like really good at it, but this isn't a Charles Gibson history lesson. So anyways, Back to this. So I've decided to do the cutout one. So basically what I'm going to do is put a sheer sheet over a window, take a picture in front of it for that contrast effect so you can really see my profile. And then I'm going to print that out and then cut that onto black paper and then transfer it onto the picture frame. So I went to Michael's for the paper. This one is called, it's scrapbook paper. It's called black linen which I thought will be really good because it has a bunch of texture on it. So I think that might be a really good contrast color. I was kind of worried because it is a bit gray and not as black. Then you'll also just need some um, background paper. This is basically what's going to be behind the frame, what I'm going to stick the silhouette on. So this is again, just, this is just cardstock like scrapbook paper and it's like an off white kind of cream color. You'll also need your frames. You'll need your pictures. You'll need some scissors. So I don't, these are supposed to be for fabric and thread cutting scissors. I never use them for that. I have better scissors for it. These are just, you know, one of those purchases that literally everybody has. And I mainly just put them in pictures and stuff like that. So, but I thought because it has a very defined point at the top, it'll be perfect for those hard to reach details. So I'm going to be using these. I don't use them for fabric, so don't get mad at me. These are literally just aesthetic scissors that I'm actually going to be using for something finally. And you'll need some adhesive, so glue or double-sided tape or something like that to be able to put your silhouette on the backing. All right, so I'm going to put my hair up in a kind of Gibson girl style hair using some foam rollers. It's not gonna look pretty, but it will have the profile that I want. And then I'm gonna go print out the pictures, come back and start cutting. Okay, so after going to two Walmarts, finally found one with a photo sharing center. I didn't even think that they would be closed because of COVID. So here is Farley's, which I think will be a good size. Like what, how did I get this white border? I don't even, honestly, like I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, yep, that looks good. How big is this? Yep. That, that. Figure it out or ask somebody, don't do what I did. I think I probably paid extra for this stupid border that I'm literally just going to be cutting into. Anyways, so we're gonna start with Farley's and then I'm going to do mine because my photos actually turned out super ugly. So I don't even wanna show them on camera. <laughs> you can see like the hair rolls, the like pink and purple and yellow but it has the Gibson girl look. And again, it's gonna be on black paper. So you can't really see all of this kind of stuff. I can't wait to see how these turn out.
just using two-sided tape. to do mine and then the reveal. turned out I think it was a super easy project only a few paper cuts I actually only got one cut and it was off the plastic glass that I thought was plastic but it is in fact glass and I shaved quite a bit of my finger off here is the final product I think they turned out really great I love Farley's I think it looks so cute I'm so happy with the way it turned out I love the little spiky details this one was a lot harder <laughs> to do than obviously this one because it's more of just a flat surface. I don't love my hair in it, but you know what? For the very first time, I think it turned out all right and it's just something I can practice on a little bit more. But his, oh, my little boy. No, I don't want to dirty it because I just cleaned it. So a couple tips. Obviously use very sharp, very small scissors. Take very small cuts. And it's easier just to cut out like the picture first and then go in to do the smaller details after once it's kind of closer in. Um, obviously make sure that your pictures are the same size. The one thing that I did realize after whenever I did that whole window treatment thing with the sheer curtain, you don't really need that. You just need to make sure that your picture is very clear. You just wanna make sure that you can see your profile really well because you're going to be cutting it out. I actually love them. I'm so happy I have this now. I think it's, I'm like, I just love it. I just want, I want them covered everywhere of like everyone I know. If you decide to make your own, please let me know in the comments, tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you guys think and what you guys decide to do yourself. They're so easy, they're so unique. Like who wouldn't want this hanging in their house? Like I know I have the actual version, but like it's just, I love them so much. So I would love to see if you guys make your own and what you guys decide to do with it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and I hope you subscribe. I put out new sewing videos every Monday and craft videos every other Friday. So I will see you guys in my next video. Oh. And there he is. There's the puppy. You want attention. Oh, those are nice cookies. Let's see, is it a likeness? <laughs>
this is disgusting. I don't know if this is worth it. Oh. He, I don't even know, like, why do you even have a dog if you're not going to do all those things with them? Why did I fill you so full? Oh, that's hot. Ew, you've got the biggest drool ever. Uh, you'd give Cole and Dylan Sprouse a run for their money. Taken, and then you fall in love with your captor. I feel like it's like a country or a city name, something syndrome. Is it with an S or is it a silent P? Sweden, no. Slovak, no. Berlin, that's not even an S, but I feel like it's like some type of overseas European country. Oh, what is it? You fall in love with your captor who kidnapped you, which is a captor. It's either a city or a capital, a capital city or a country. Stockholm. Stockholm syndrome. Ha! Yes. 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 <laughs> They really didn't want Mrs. Reed to escape her picture frame.